everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Concrete the Hosses. Today is working the lower garage day. Uh, getting this cleaned up, we got a big set of countertops to do. We poured these with the fireplace hearth. Now, if you didn't watch our video, watch it. This is plain concrete, and this is charcoal colored concrete, black charcoal. So I thought that would be real nice. We'll polish that together. We're going to cream coat these letters black. And whoever wants it, I, I thought that would look cool on Steve's patio or on Tommy's patio. Who, whoever wants it can have it. So this one. Outdoor with the Morgans. Hey, hey. Look at that. Are they heavy? You guys need me or should I just keep yeah. filming? Yeah, just keep filming. <laughs> Okay, so I did the same. Oh, nice. We made him a we made him a barrel top, but I didn't use the sticker material. So I'll polish this cream coat. Uh, once I polish it, uh, I have like just a couple of holes. That turned out really cool looking. So won't that look neat with the with the black plain? What color letters? Red? Hmm. What, what color? Kind of looks cool. color. No. Cream. Yeah, maybe like a maybe like a tan. Isn't his garage? Is this going in? No, you can do whatever he wants with it. Um he has, too much he has Kubota. We gotta do uh, orange. How could we do orange? I don't think we have an orange. Harvest wheat. That's that's really orange. Uh harvest wheat or sandstone. Okay. Alright, we'll come up with something. Uh, Emily sold those. That's a, that's another sample. So break it. Yeah, no. Nah. So Emily's going to label these for different wedding venues. Uh, they'll put the bride and groom's name on that. So we're getting a pile of them for her. And we're going to need these out of here. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to show this. I am working over here. Uh, getting ready to make some more molds. Every year I add to our mold collection. So here's our uh, two and a quarter, our four and seven and a quarter. This is what we make for our steps and porches. I'm adding one. Uh, this is our countertop edge. So I'm gonna make a mold of this and have this as a profile. I did a vanity in my house and I really like it, but we just never made any more of these. So I'm gonna make some of these and we're gonna offer this to customers this year. So I'll show you how I do that. Yeah, I have everything laid out and pre-drilled. Let me put this together and show you how I have that. So I wanna start duplicating this. This is a styrofoam um, piece of trim. I got from Home Depot, oh boy, a couple years ago when I first made it. You can see these rubber liners that I made. So I'm just making more of these. I really like that profile, and I think there's a market for it. I think we have customers out there that would like it. So just making sure this is nice and clean, free of any debris. There it is, all screwed together. So now... Here's one that I made a few years ago. So I'll cast my polymer. You can see how we peel that out. Then we can pour concrete right against this. I can reuse this form. I'm, I'm gonna make 10 of these and have them in stock. So to buy them, who knows what that would cost, even if you could find this profile. So this is the nice thing about doing this. I can make any profile that the customer would want. So if you want something special, give us a call. We can make it for you. Anything. <laughs> well, we're going to make are the step liners I talked about, plus a mold, a new countertop mold. Any leftover material, we're going to put on here and make a heavy stone stamp skin that we use on our patios all the time. So the product I use is from Smooth On. It's a Reynolds company. 
and I sure do hope they pick us up someday because I really like this product. I use Vitaflex 60. I have used 40 and 60. I kind of like 60 a little bit better. It, it performs better for us. Uh, so that's what we're using again. And I didn't even remember that. Whenever I was ordering it, I said, hey, what was the last stuff I got? And because I knew I used 60 and 40. And so I can't remember her name in the office. Said, oh, let me look up your file. So she pulled it right up. Said, Tommy bought 60 last time. And I said, that's what I like. So let's stay with that. Jim, you can throw that one on too. We'll empty that bin while we got it going out there. Uh, so this is a and b the b you have to mix before you do anything so take these off they were got a little bit of rainwater on the lid so give this a good thorough mix this stuff this is fourteen hundred dollars worth of material uh this 20 gallons i got two two sets of it so don't spill it don't waste it very expensive but we will make over three thousand dollars worth of step liner over that. so give this a good mix once i'm done mixing i just let it drip off of here till there's hardly anything left on there and just to keep the floor cleaner and less globs on the floor to trip over just kind of set it in a bucket like that I can set it on cardboard but sometimes it runs over the edge uh, this this works pretty well for me so now I have a bucket and I always put the A in first because that's a thinner material I'm sorry the B in first because this is a thinner material, then I add the A to it. This is thicker. So I like doing that. It seems to mix up real good. So I'm going to do three liters and six liters. Equal parts. Okay, the first one's always the toughest. It's uh, heavy. And hold that. I should probably put the gloves on, but I'll be pretty neat. I'm just thinking... Um, Something to wipe that edge off. Paper towel right there, too. This will work. Okay. So stop me at three. Ready? Three liters. Yeah. Back. And I always seal these up right away so no dirt and dust get in there. Okay. On to mixing. Now again, I just let these drip off, sit, use as much of that material as I can, let it all drip in the bucket. Next universal uh, mold release, giving these a nice spray. You want to see them really saturated. Put this material in there, peel it out. You don't want it sticking and wasting a batch. Spray it on there, empty. going on this so you can see it's shiny for a minute and then it dolls up but really put it in there especially since this is a brand new mold and then each round like there's probably some mold release left on these Nevertheless, coat them. This stuff is cheap compared to the polymer. This is all dripped off. Goes back in the bucket. That will pour in there. I usually just start with the big one first. Now you want to start at one end and, and keep that wave going. You start here and pour it all the way across. You'll see like a ribbon type effect going on. See what I'm talking about? It's right across the top. 
We're going to need every bit of two batches, maybe more. So six is coming up a little bit short for our seven and a quarters. So we'll just remember that and adjust the next batch. Okay, when you're mixing it up, it starts out and you can feel that ball of A in the middle. Now it turns to just all the same uniform cream. So that's what you're looking for. No streaks of clear. Okay. Let this drip off. A lot of material in there. Heat the waste. And two, so I'll just start up here where we got kind of thin. You see how it just blends right together. As you get close to the end, you want to go easy and give it a chance to settle out. Back when I first started doing this, I overfilled them and it's dripping on the floor. What a mess to clean up. In fact, there's a glob over here that I still trip over. I think Jim was just trying to scrape it off a little bit. I told him I didn't know what happened there. Okay, so let that settle out. Jump to number four. You probably have, from the time you mix to pouring it, you probably have about 30 minutes. So it's nothing you have to hurry on. But it won't bond to the, you can't do half and half, right? It won't bond to the dry stuff or will it? Um, you know what, uh, yeah, because see, you can see thin areas here. Yeah, I did go back over that. The next day, like I come in and there's a hole there where it settled out and I top that and it worked just fine. Hmm. So let's just mix up just a little bit more and we'll get this done. I'm saying, can you add to it? Yeah, this one's settling out a little bit. It's still quite pliable. Just building that up a little bit across the middle. You can always add it. But like I said earlier, when it's overflowing onto the floor, that's just money. Money dripping away on the borders. So we'll make another border stamp just with our leftover material. And I'm not going to have much. I might just mix up a little bit more because this is just a little bit too small. Most of our borders are 12 inches. This is growing, huh? Might work. Might work. That's a free stamp. That's a that's 80 bucks right there. Yeah. You could stand there long enough to let it all drain. Yeah. Out. And I need the bucket empty for tomorrow anyway, so. Okay, come on back and see us tomorrow while we peel these out, make more, and we're gonna start the big countertop. Good morning everybody, thanks for tuning in to Conquer with the Hosses. Today is countertop day. So I went out and made some notes. We have to build an outdoor cooktop countertop. 140, uh, 187 inches long, 29 and a half inches. That's really deep for a countertop. And then an island top, 87 inches by 44. So a couple of real big tops, 
we're gonna go ahead and get ready right now. What Jim and I are doing now, I rip these to two inches tall, and about every 12 inches I drill a hole. Now a screw will drop right through there and attaches to our underside. Uh, so we usually start, here is the back wall. We'll run that nice and straight down the form and then everything gets built off of that. That way we know we're perfectly straight. Same thing on the island top. Now I had to extend this over. So I'll have a seam right here. I'll lay a piece of packing tape on that. That'll be the underside, you'll never see it. Uh, but on the overhang, and we're only talking inch and a half, uh, it'll feel real nice. You won't feel that little ridge there. Not a big deal, just something we do. Okay, let's get this a little further along. Keep you posted. Okay, countertops are moving along. Uh, like I said earlier, this is the wall countertop. There's a grill. There's a burner. There's a might be another appliance, maybe a sink. I can't remember. Uh, so no broken stone liner. And this all gets broken stone liner. So we're starting on that corner. We'll do a real tight radius right there. Straight down, real tight radius. And then extra step liner so we don't have to cut it. We, Steve left a gap here. So he'll run that through. And it saves, like I said, cutting the step liners. This is a five and a half inch backsplash. The length of this counter. Uh, and we'll bulkhead that off because center-ish right here, we're gonna do a real high 36 inch backsplash behind the grill. So we'll just eliminate that out of the six or we'll run it through and then just saw cut it out, huh? Let's just leave them big. Uh, the, the island, of course, no backsplash. So I'll start wrapping this with our step liner. Like I said, a piece of tape down that. We'll move along. We are gonna be ready to pour shortly. Comes to our curved corners. We always make these. Now it makes our corners identical. From one side to the other. So they just set right in here. Okay, wrapping it with liner. I'll just get right against that. Now, I'm trying to decide. This is, we could do a real tight radius there. I think I might like a square corner here. Let me think about that. So we're doing a backsplash 36 by, what did I say, 50? 50, 58 and a half. 58 and a half long. We're gonna do one more uh, barrel top. But first, we're gonna peel these out. Because I want my new barrel top, we're gonna change it up and we're gonna use our new liner for that. Okay, so I just get a screwdriver or a screw. Look how easy that comes out. Couldn't go back. Ready? And for the big one. Voila. Almost forgot about our floppy. <laughs> Gonna flip that right. Look at that, huh? Now when we're doing a border, it's about 12 inches wide, so that'll be a nice. We're just gonna make about six of those. Wrap around steps, nice. Yeah, real nice.
Okay, so we're going to make another barrel top for another patio somewhere. So this is how I do logos in them. My local printer will print this up for me. And it's a real thick, rubber, sticky material. So I get it in reverse, because this is the top. When we flip it, there you have it. Taking my time, peeling this off. Voila. All right, Monday morning concrete.